Hi, I'm Chap Bettis, author of The Disciple Making Parent, and this is my audio blog, where I read some of my blog posts in audio format for your convenience. Well, in today's episode, we're going to be thinking about grace and law, and I think there's a lot of misunderstanding on this topic. You know, I've noticed a good but misguided desire among many young Christian parents. They seek to be intentional in the way that they're raising their children. And many have an excellent desire to be more gospel-focused. They want to treat their children the way God is treating them, with grace. And so, they draw a direct line from this grace, and then they want to parent with grace. Unfortunately, using just this paradigm for parenting flattens the gospel. When we look at the whole of Scripture, we see that God adopted Israel as his son and called him out of Egypt. And the Scripture tells us that God then placed Israel, his son, under the law for a time. And when the proper time came, Israel would be released from the law. Galatians tells us that the law was like the tutor of a young child. It was a guardian put there until the child had grown up. And that's found in Galatians 3.24. Theologians historically have seen three good purposes of the law. First, the law shows us our own need of a Savior. God tells us that the greatest commandments are to love Him and to love our neighbor. But How do we know that? How do we know how we should fulfill those? The law spells out the how of loving God and how to love our neighbor. And when we don't fulfill those commands, we realize that we're sinful and we need a Savior. So first, the law shows us our need of a Savior. Second, the law restrains sin. It's a a fence or a rope that holds back sinful behavior. Now, the law can't change the heart, but the threat of punishment does create civil order. So second, the law restrains sin. And third, the law shows those who have a changed heart how to please Christ. It's the railroad tracks that tell us how to run. When God changes a heart so that it's born again, new desires to please God are given to it. You see, the law, for all its inadequacies, was still a good thing. It was the tutor that prepared the nation for the grace of Christ. It taught them basic lessons about God's holiness, atonement, and love for others. If God had revealed Jesus to the nation at the Mount of Sinai, it would have made no sense. The young nation needed the grace of the law before they needed the grace of freedom. In the gospel. We know the purposes of the law are similar in our homes. First, our law will show our children their need for a Savior. Our young children need to learn to live under our law. There need to be rules which they are expected to obey and where there are consequences when they disobey. This dynamic of commands, obedience, and disobedience actually inculcates a sense of their need for the Savior. So first, our law will also show our children their need for a Savior. Second, living under the law also restrains natural childlike disobedience. It creates a civil society in the home where there's order. The law can't change the heart, but it can create a peaceful home without lawlessness. Having wild children is not a sign of grace and godliness. Wild and disobedient children are actually a black mark for a man and his leadership. And you can see that in Titus 1.6. So second, living under the law restrains natural childlike disobedience. So third, living under our law also trains our children to please Christ. Now, some may object. But shouldn't I show my children grace? Well, absolutely. Show them the grace of love, the grace of affection, the grace of calmness, the grace of order, and the grace of consequences. 
You see, letting our children disobey us without consequences, it's not a sign of grace, but it's a sign of hate. Jesus says that in Revelation 3.19, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Living under the law prepared a people for the grace of Jesus Christ. In a similar way, bringing our young children under submission to our rules prepares them to know the grace of the Lord Jesus. And just as the time came for the law to be replaced because its purposes were fulfilled, so a time will come for our family laws to fall away. You see, gospel parenting does not negate the law. It includes it. Well, thanks for listening to the Disciple Making Parent audio blog. This material is found in the workbook of our video course, Parenting with Confidence. This course is our biblical foundations of parenting, and it's specifically aimed at parents of young children. So you can find more information on our website, thedisciplemakingparent.com, or you could also visit parentingwithconfidencestudy.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please consider telling someone else about the show and leaving us a rating. Both of those very small things mean a lot. Thanks for listening.